Hey everybody, welcome to the Elseworlds Exchange. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. Hey, so today I thought it'd be fun to talk about some comic book superhero movies for a change. Not everybody on this uh, channel likes to talk about comic book superhero movies. Or That's fair. Comic book movies. I wanted the. I don't want to limit it to just superhero movies, but the 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 the, the topic is: what's a comic book movie from any time period that you want to see a sequel for today? Today, not today. like I wish they would made it. Yeah. No, like if they could, you know, like there's there's some conversations about uh, how you know there was such uh, warm reception of both Spider Man in No Way Home. You know, there's rumblings. You know, Sam Raimi directed the, uh, the Multiverse of Madness movie. Hey. Maybe they can make a Spider-Man four with uh, yeah. with Tobey Maguire and Sam Raimi. I was gonna say like it has to be with Tobey Maguire because if it's Andrew Garfield, then you're only getting Spider-Man three. Exactly, but you still could. We could get Spider-Man three. You could could do that too. Could do them all. How about that? And it's like, <laughs> oh. So with that said, you know, and of course with the advent of like the Flashpoint movie, or I think they're just calling it the Flash now. Uh, Michael Keaton's supposed to come back as Batman, and that might like, I mean. Michael Keaton's in good Worlds shape. Worlds will collide. Yeah, hey, maybe we'll get a proper uh, Batman 3 out of the deal. You know, maybe one day. It'll be like a weird Batman 3 that's like, so yeah, about uh, 35 years later. Uh, I just I went Batman. into hiding. We could do we could do the Dark Knight with yes. Michael Keaton. Oh, there's some people who would really like to see that shit. I mean, I know <laughs> that, uh, yeah, that that's that's always in the back of somebody's mind. So yeah, uh, what, what, uh, so there's a, there's, there's a myriad of comic book movies out there uh you know like the crow blade suicide squad ghost rider oh, yeah. all the superman movies x-men the turtles the phantom then what's your pick for a, a a comic book movie that has been made that you'd like to see a sequel for made today dread right away <laughs> dread. oh no you the 2011 yes. carl urban dread i oh. want it <laughs> give me a sequel oh, that, that kills me Cause that's such a great answer and it's like, and it's something that could happen at any time and they're never going to do it. <laughs> I, it hurts so bad. Yes. I don't care what they do with the franchise. No, just make it. Yeah. I know. I know. Dread that. Oh my God. Damn it. I would kill. I signed the petition by the way. Oh really? A dread too. Oh yeah. Oh, wow. I signed that petition. <laughs> I sent it. I was like, yeah, I'm putting my name on this. Yeah, why not? You know what I mean? I mean, like, and, and if there's one thing that really works, usually it's uh, it's petitions. It's petitions. <laughs> you know, I, I just looked this up. Dread came out in 2012. Okay, I was off by a year. It is 10 years. It is. It's it 10, is years. 10 years. It's old. about to be 11. Oh, <laughs> because we're getting close to the end of the year. Yeah. Yep. How great would it have been to have like, hey, let's celebrate the 10 years of Dread with another movie. Yeah. I know that uh, they had been talking about making a, a show about Mega City and that maybe Carl Urban. That. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'll, I'll take anything in that Dread universe as long as it's done in the same style that the 2012 Dread was. Yes. Yes, absolutely. That one, of course, was directed by Peter Travis. It came out in 2012. It stars Carl Urban, Lena Headey, and uh, Olivia Thrillby. Uh, the, the, the great ass movie. Uh, apparently, they've been working on it since twenty uh, two thousand six, and then it, it 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 came on the scene in twenty twelve, right at the advent of the three D movie experience. And it had some pretty good three D effects. I'll admit it did. No, I was I was uh, I remember when they were advertising it. It was like they were calling it Dread three D, which never yeah, a good no, because <laughs> you're just like Dread one. I right. guess was Judge Dread. Judge Dread. Yep. No dread two. No, uh, no dread three D. Just jump right to three D. But uh, uh, no, this has nothing to do with the Jaws judge dread. Was any indicator? Don't worry about the three D. Just leave it out. But this one had solid three D. I, it did. I, it really we liked did. it. In yeah. my opinion, better three D than Avatar. Ooh, that's right. Shots fired at James I, Cameron. Yeah. Well, he's laughing all the way to the bank. But I. Uh, Maybe I, not necessarily aesthetically better, like not yeah. as clean as execution, but I yeah. think it was used better. I I mean, like by then they knew what they wanted, right? Because like after Avatar, they were like, okay, so and clearly what happened was they went like, oh, we can charge like literally almost double ticket price, just, and people was, still buy it. People still buy it and watch like 
3D. I know. Which, why? But I will say, man, seeing Avatar, you know, in Christmas season in the theater, I think we saw it in like an IMAX-esque theater. It was like yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was yeah, massive. Season. Yeah. And like, I remember when the burn, when the tree was burning and got the embers in the air and I'm like, this is admittedly impressive. And then I always saw Clash of the Titans in 3D and I'm like, this is a lot less impressive. This feels like you made a movie and then you applied some kind of filter on it. And they're like, that is exactly what we did. Yes, we did. Not Which Clash of the Titans, the original or the remake? Obviously the remake, they didn't like make Clash of the Titans from the 80s into 3D, although... Wouldn't that be hilarious? <laughs> I would love that. I did... No, you know what? I would not love that because I saw Clash of the Titans in a theater and it was horrible. It was the, the first Clash of the Titans. I mean, the first Clash of the Titans, in my opinion, is not that great. Now, no. even the remake didn't do anything for me. I dug the remake. I didn't love it, but it's like, I, I knew it. They knew what they were making. I knew what I was watching. That Pegasus had no business looking that good. Like every time that Pegasus is on screen, I'm like, fuck. It's a good looking horse. Yeah. It, better than the Scorpions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the seams on that movie. But the new class, the Titans. Yeah. Star, uh, nobody. Uh, the, the lead the, the, the lead from Avatar, incidentally. Yeah. That guy and Sam Liam Worthington. Neeson. Yeah. And Liam Neeson le released the Kraken. Yeah. Sam Worthington, that's the guy, because he uh, he was the, he was the it guy. Oh, he was the bit. hotness at that point. Yep, he was They're the like, franchise oh, king. Yeah, Avatar, Terminator, Clash of the Titans. Oh, why did no. you have to remind me about Terminator? Well, that Terminator was Terminator Salvation. Four? Yeah, yeah, Salvation. Terminator Four. Yeah, technically Four, <laughs> even though it's like the third or f Terminator Four, fourth John Connor. Yes, where they're just like <laughs> ignore three. Yeah. Please, kind of, because they were like, oh, no, Catherine Brewster still exists, but it won't be Claire Danes. Instead, it's Bryce Dallas Howard. Uh, anyway, we're getting on track. But uh, yeah, Dread came out and the, the, I, I loved the 3D. They, and they and they like I, I don't know if like I don't know which came first, the script or the 3D. But they were like, they, the, it feels like the invention of the slow-mo drug was them being like, let's, let's see what we can show that will blow people's minds. Yeah, and it did. Yeah. It was cool. Oh my god, I've never seen a better depiction of drugs in film where right. I said to myself, okay, I don't do drugs, but this but. makes me want to do drugs. <laughs> Seriously, and if you lived in that Mega City 1, uh, I'd be on drugs all the time. It's just a misery fest. Especially if those drugs were that dope. <laughs> I'm at, right? Like, oh yeah, no, it makes you feel like you're living an entire lifetime as you're plummeting to your, I'm not, you know what? I'm not going to spoil anything. No, I'm not going to spoil this 10-year-old movie, uh, but <laughs> holy damn. Yeah, I would like to see a sequel to this. Now, here's my question. Normally, the sequels, especially, like, let's say that we live in a world where Dread 3D actually... Let's just speculate and say that we do. Yeah, let's pretend like, oh, man, you know, it was a... Well, remember the humble beginnings of the Dread franchise? Uh, but but not, the, movie... not the super beginnings. Let's ignore no. that. No, no, no. Well, I mean, you know, I, I'll be honest. I, I loved, uh, I, not loved. I watched a lot of Judge Dredd when I was a kid. <laughs> no. I, I can't believe they were like, let's get him on Asante. That way they can both go at each other. That robot, though, super dope. The robot was, okay. The robot is probably the coolest thing about that movie. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, the bike is pretty fun. The helmet's dope. The, uh, the lawgiver's awesome. The helmet does awesome, look good, but right? I don't like the lawgiver in that movie. No, no. I mean, I like Urban's more. I like Urban's more, but that's also because like I'm seeing it being used more as a motorcycle, and it has a better it it looks better. But the lawmaker in Stallone's Dread was yeah. more accurate to the comic book. A lot of that movie is accurate to the comic book, like big, really accurate. Way. Like it's frustrating how accurate it is. Like you'll see it and be like, "That's dumb," and then you read the comics, and you're like, "Uh oh, oh, that's dumb." <laughs> That's a pretty solid, accurate uh, to, uh, interpretation of this of this comic book. But now, uh, yeah, if we were to get a sequel to Dread, would mm -hmm. you want to see more iconic judges like right. Judge Death? I mean, I really do, but I don't think this movie really lends itself to Judge. It Death. doesn't. That's the thing. Dread doesn't have that like otherworldly. I, I almost want to say supernatural. Yeah, like supernatural feel. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. like, Judge Dredd definitely did. Yes, like, oh, I believe in Judge, in Stallone's Dredd, uh, that Judge Death exists in that universe. Yeah, um, somewhere I think out in the wastes. 
but that being said, like if they wanted to switch it up, like if they if 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 Dread was like, okay, so it's Carl Urban, it's this Mega City one, it's that kind of world, but every sequel gets a different crazy ass director, and like Guillermo del Toro got Dread two, and they were like, and he's like, I want to use uh, the Judge Death, I'd be like, oh fucking you, okay, okay, oh, <laughs> yes. Right? Like, now I'm like, I don't care if it's if it completely breaks the realistic illusion of the first Dread movie. Uh, it'll be yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it'll be gorgeous. It'll look amazing. And it'll be fucking sad and dark. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, that's that was my question originally. It was going to be like, if it did well, you know, normally they were like, I want to make it, like, bigger. Yeah. Would you want, like, another kind of you know, the block kind of movie where it's like, it's a, it's kind of relegated to one location and we're going to, we're going to kind of like try to keep our budget low. Or he would be like, no balls to the wall, all the lore, everything you, you talk about mutants. No, no, no. We're going to see some fucking mutants too much. I think, yeah. I think you stick to the formula. Maybe you go a little bigger. Maybe it's encompassing like an area of the city and not just one of the blocks. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think what worked about it was the fact that it was so contained yeah you weren't going on this sprawling epic it wasn't you know blade runner 2049 mm -hmm. i think it was oh yeah yeah 20 yeah i think it's 2049 yeah which while cool like you know I, it's not what dread is no no but that's fair. but if you're gonna get someone like yomo de toro to do judge death right you gotta see a little bit more you have to explore yeah I guess, I, mean, I guess if you get the right story, like yeah. the great thing about Dread was the story fit yeah. what it had. It was one space. It's the fact that there's someone who is just taking over this entire Peach Trees complex yeah. with drugs, with crime, with murder, with fear, and that these are what the judges have to deal with. And they're outgunned and outclassed, except yep. for the one, well, the two. Standalone yeah. characters that are going to fight to the bitter end. Yes. And yeah, no. that kind of story is just what I imagine Dread to be. It's just like this in and out day of absolute hell. Yeah. It's like every cop story you see. Like, what was it? Uh, 12 blocks or 16 yeah. blocks? Yeah, 16 blocks. Yeah. It's just like, and it's it's diehard. It's every it's cop's raid. worst it's, day. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. But through the lens of like a kind of, I don't know. It's hard to call it like a science fiction movie, except for the fact that Anderson has, you know, psychic powers. Yeah. Um, you know, we don't see like the Hill folk. We don't see judge death and, you know, all the other like more fantastic elements. But again, like the comic, which ran for a while, like it, it, it it's a parody subversive satire comic that has moments of like seriousness each it's not one consistent theme or tone. So like judge dread kind of lends himself to being in different wheelhouses, but him being kind of like the consistent rock throughout. And Anderson's a, a major player and like is used or not used depending on the circumstances. So like you could write Anderson out of it or bring her in, have her be a cameo or have her just ride along with judge dread. And like, that's their thing. It, it's it's entirely up to the uh, up to the, the filmmaker. Um, if if they were ever to do another Judge movie, mm -hmm. would you want to see Batman in it? <laughs> oh, like a Judge Dread Batman crossover, like we got? Yeah, like the comic. Grant. Grant. No, <laughs> <laughs> I mean the thing is, it would have to because like the Judge Dread comics that had that they had produced are in and of themselves like they are through and through Judge Dread comic books. They are like meant to kind of make fun of Batman a little bit, uh, if not a lot of it. Okay. And, you know, Cause like judge dread is just, he's a fascist who is just entirely devoted to the letter of the law, regardless of how like corrupt or, or even how, uh, asinine it might be. Yeah. yeah. Batman is an anarchist who clearly represents the antithesis of the law, uh, because, he doesn't operate within it and does whatever he wants. And he's a vigilante and uh, yet still follows justice. Right. Yeah, exactly. But like, those are two different ideas. You know, dread is about the law. Batman's about justice. And they, they couldn't be more di diametrically opposed. Uh, 
I get, you know, I would rather see like Batman versus Predator than a Batman versus Judge Dredd movie. I don't want a versus because yeah. the versus is going to be a team up. Well, it has to be a versus. I mean, like, there's no way that you're going to have like Batman and Dredd in one room and have them not fight at some point. So unless and and hear me out on this. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Judge Dredd is called to Gotham to right. solve a crime. And Batman's like, I don't like this guy. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the thing is, well, Judge Dredd's from the future well, and he lives in another reality. Like he'd have to like fall through a wormhole or something to end up in Gotham. It, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. He'd have to like, and the thing is, if he was like, sh- if he knew the law, like if he knew the, the like the, the, Gotham law. Law, the law, if he knew the Gotham law and was like, all right, this is the law. I mean, he would still not be able to work with Batman because Batman constantly skirts the law. He'd be like, well, one thing I know for certain is what you're doing is against the law. <laughs> like even that's, if you that's get two results. months in an ISO cube in Arkham. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he would probably just put everyone in Arkham into ISO cubes, and that's just that'd be the end of it. Um, okay. I, I I think I'd rather see another comic book than 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 ever see a movie with Judge Dredd and Batman. They're right, so cool. different. But I, I but I, I I had to ask. Yeah, no, sure. But I would love to see that Judge Dredd too, especially if they're like, no, 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 each franchise is a different fucking interpretation of the guy, but it's still Carl Urban and he always does his thing. Like he's consistent, everything else is different. Because yeah, there's a lot of like Judge Dredd where it's like he's in the sewers or he's outside the city or he's in some crazy ass part of the city. Like, you know, we saw Mega City one, yeah, big that goddamn city. It's a whole eastern seaboard according it's to that insane. movie. So yeah. it's like, you know, you, you you can't imagine that like the like the northeast is exactly the same in terms of like ge- geography and climate than it is down in like the south. So it's like, yeah, mix it up, like play with it, you know, have Judge Dredd all over the place. Yeah. That, that's, oh, my God. That's... Can you imagine like cities that have been flooded like uh, uh, New Orleans, yes. like uh, uh, North Carolina, the, the Outer Banks and things like that? We're just yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. we live in a submerged city. Like totally. there's part of there's pieces like all the way below and people live down there. Right. And like these like wet habitats. And I'm not saying yeah. they're like aqua people, but the, like, no, yeah. they like they depressure a system or they pressurize yeah. the system to keep the water out. Yeah. So like yeah. hide from the surface dwellers and the law up there. Yeah. That'd be kind that'd of be dope. great. That'd be really cool to see, especially to see it as Judge Dredd interprets it because he's going to be an asshole about it. But it would still be fun to watch. I would uh, love to see the the kind of CG that they did for that movie to have like underwater scenes. Oh, That'd yeah. Be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, right. only, my only criticism for Judge Dredd is no is, is there's no squibs. I wish there, uh, you know, all the all, all the all the shots where they're going to the stairs and they're shooting people. I'm like could use some some robocop esque squibs would have would have put it right over the top for me just some real violence i just wanted some real it's like you were you weren't gonna get away with anything other i mean like look people are literally skinned alive and thrown off of a of a high rise like splattered yeah. all over the place like we see some some hardcore shit but like i want that kind of total recall starship troopers kind of like you know have we ever put this many squibs on a human being no we haven't Go! are they gonna be okay i don't, I don't know. know film yeah yeah that's that's my only criticism of that movie. Otherwise, everything's like no notes. Uh, as far as me, yeah. Today, uh, by the way, I have more. Oh yeah, no, we gotta have more because like we're only eighteen minutes into the episode. But uh, okay, good. But yeah, go go for one. Yeah, yeah. I would like to see a sequel today of Tank Girl. Nice, right? Because okay. Lori Petty is awesome, still around, looks great. And I think if it was in the hands of somebody who, I mean, like, honestly, the director of the original Tank Girl movie was, uh, knew what they were doing and tried something that, like, I think really struck a tone with what this movie was supposed to be. Well, they're clearly a fan of the comic book. Right, exactly. Well, I mean, based on just like all that comic book art that they shoved into the movie, the comic book art, the way the cutscenes that were animated, yeah, yeah, the oh movie, oh my god, yeah, well, and the, and the visual style of the movie that was Rachel Talalay, she, uh, a female director, which is also really cool for a comic book franchise, yeah. Um, I think that today, like, I, I think that in many ways, Tank Girl was a product of its time and also a little ahead of its time, like, it's one of those things where it's like, man. Like you could only make that movie in 1995, but also it's too bad it didn't come out in 2005 because it might have actually hit like any kind of audience, a, a bigger chord. 
I didn't see Tank Girl until it was on VHS in the 2000s. Same. Right? Like, I didn't even know the movie existed until after it had long died as a movie. And, uh, you know, but like... I may have seen it like mid-90s. No, not mid, uh, because it came out mid. I want to say like late 90s, maybe like 99, 2000. Yeah. I feel like I saw it 2000 was, was probably when I saw it last. Yeah. Or when I saw it first. Um, but like every time that movie is on, you watch I'll it. click it. I'll be like, yeah. uh, let's see what's going on on Pluto. Oh, Tank Girl, click. Oh my God. Now I, I, uh, I watched it. I want to say a year ago. It was during lockdown. So it was a couple of years ago now, but I was, I remember it was on lockdown and I'm like, I have nothing to do. And I was like, and I, and I saw, I was like scrolling through TikTok and like a clip came up and I was like, Tank Girl. and just immediately turned it on and watched the whole fucking movie. Yeah. Uh, it is so endlessly watchable. And so like, weirdly joyful i i it's so weird and great and stupid and fun um and i think today like if they were like no new movie we're gonna make like a 25 30 million dollar tank girl movie we're gonna use like cg practical effects we're gonna get like some gotta keep the uh the kangaroo people the same yeah, yeah. I'm not saying you have to get the same actors, although no. I think Ice T would come back. I think you have to get Ice T, right? Yeah. Oh, my but God. no, the practical <laughs> effects of it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, those I believe are Stan Winston. So, like the the the, the same guy behind Predator and Terminator also designed the, uh, the the kangaroos. Here's a fun little fact about the kangaroos: um, they're supposed to have uh, big dongs, and they definitely made them. For their kangaroo bodies. And I mean, I believe it. Yeah, but like they were like, yeah, no, they're supposed to have like the, the rippers, I believe they were called. They, they yes. need to have like huge, huge boners so they can like fuck. And I'm like, okay. Like again, only in 1995 can you be like, yeah, make Stan Winston the like the messiah of creature and visual effects, make kangaroo dicks for our weird anti comedy action movie. I imagine the director just being like, look. They had him in the comics. You gotta have him. Dicks. Gotta, Come on, give Stan. Me dicks. <laughs> yeah. Give me, also, give, me, uh, give me some kangaroo dildos. Yeah. I mean, like, let me tell you something. The movie stars Lori Petty and Naomi Watts. They're two incredible female actors that are working today who would still crush it. I would love to see what Jet Girl's up to again. Uh, Malcolm McDowell, you know, he's a friggin' he's got a hologram head in, towards the end of the movie. Uh, I think he, but no. he's dead, though. Oh, they kill him. Yeah. No, yeah, they, you can they bring him back, maybe. Uh, I mean, honestly, just let the man rest. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I like the idea of being like, no, we're not going to like, because re- you could reboot Tank Girl like at any point. They could have rebooted Tank Girl in 2005 and it would have been yeah. stupid. They could have re- rebooted Tank Girl in 2012 and it would have been a movie nobody saw. Every like 10 years, they could be like, oh, yeah, no, Tank Girl, another another Tank Girl. And it's just like, and it, like, like Tomb Raider games and movies where it's like oh whatever uh melissa villas in york can play tank girl but the idea of being like the no, first no, no. melissa that came out of my head was melissa joan hart and i'm like melissa joan hart as tanker no no <laughs> that i don't sorry I'm afraid i don't see it no 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 um uh, but you know to to be like no we're doing a sequel 30 years later tank girl and it's Lori petty and she's old and she's still got her tank and she's just like she the still exact has same tank. character she's the same character jet girl is like no we have to create a society with rules so that yeah. like, humanity can survive and tank girl's like i'm the fuck out of here that's not right. what i'm about i'm about exactly anarchy like, and fun right like they fix so they like they save the day tech jet girl and the rippers or whatever like fixed society they did it like the humanity's back and they're still building and stuff and tank girl's out there somewhere she bails she just bails yeah her and the fucking the the the, the stoner kangaroo that she bangs in that yeah movie. the doofy guy the doofy guy, uh, you know, they run off and maybe what brings her back is he dies or something <laughs> like whatever. Uh, but, you know, you, you but you make this like 30 million dollar kind of like, why did you make this kind of movie that's like really ultra stylized? But, you know, plays with the idea of like maybe, you know, the, the, the convention of the 90s, you know, nostalgia slash you know, anti-authoritarianism and, you know, especially today in like a totally corporate run world. Like, I don't know. There's something there that like, I feel like if, if someone was like, Oh, 
uh, you need to resurrect some random comic book franchise from the 90s and it can't be superhero based. It's like, oh man, fucking yeah, Tank Girl. Like, I'd rather see a Tank Girl sequel than a Rocketeer sequel. Yeah. You know, as opposed like, no, I, I like got the Rocketeer. A Rocketeer. We're the good. Rocketeer is a contained story and it works because like at the end of the day, they win, the Nazis lose. Yay. We got it. Yeah. It's done. Um, similarly, like, you know, uh, but yeah, no, I, I like Tank Girl. I think that'd be really fun. I think I would like to see Lori Petty again. I think that's really what it is. I just want an excuse for Lori Petty to be in things again. Yeah. Um, she's awesome. You know, she's so awesome, man. Uh, but yeah, that's something I'd like to see. It's just, just a sequel to, to Tank Girl. I kind of want Lori Petty. I, I want Tank Girl to like be disillusioned. Like they're they're trying to get her oh. back. And be like, no, you have to rejoin society. Right, help us. And she's like, no, society's all bullshit. Right, no. Yeah, what what has society done for me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man. I wanted to blow things up, and I got to blow things up, and then suddenly, like, I had to stop blowing things up because you wanted to have civilization. Yeah, what the fuck? You almost took my tank away. Um, apparently, Lori Petty is still in things. I just don't see any of them. <laughs> Apparently, last oh, thing I saw Larry Petty in other than Tank Girl was A League of Their Own. There you go. You know what she was in? She was 24 episodes of it. Orange is the New Black. No kidding. I know. Now I might actually watch it. Huh. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I was like, what? 24 episodes? Damn it. But yeah, she's uh, she's she's in another TV miniseries called Station Eleven just now. And it's like, okay, 10 episodes. Cool. I don't know what that is, but... Tank I kind of want to find out because Lori Petty. You're right. She's great. But I don't think she's the star. I think she's just in it. Um, plus, you know, th this is an opportunity to kind of like give new life to movies that didn't, I think, get a fair shake when they came out. So was Tank Girl a very popular comic? No. I don't think so. <laughs> it, was, it was subversive. It was, yeah, it was, a, it was very much a fringe book. I mean, it still is, but like, it, it was a fringe book that was very popular among like the indie comic scene and the punk rock scene. Like it's, you know, it, it made Jim Mahfood's career and, uh, you know, he's, he's still working today, still doing yeah. Tank Girl stuff. And it's like, yeah, no, Tank Girl was never a huge thing. And I, I, I actually, it's funny because, you know, the plot of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back was like after X-Men did well, like all the studios like gobbled up all these different like comic book franchises. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's 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 not really accurate. It's actually accurate that they did it in the 90s when Batman hit it big on the box office. They started gobbling up all these franchises. If this you recall, is what the kids want. This is what the kids want. They want these fucking comic books. Well, I got I got the original Batman, The Shadow, and I got Jack Ryan himself, Alec Baldwin He's the shadow. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Well, I got Warren Beatty making dick motherfucking Tracy. You know, it's like that. It was just pandemonium. The Rocketeer, Dick Tracy, The Crow, Tank Girl, Barb Wire. All those movies were all made by Hollywood that was like, we can we can Batman it. You just melted my brain when you said Dick Tracy because I suddenly realized that was a comic book. Yeah. Comic strip. Yeah. Like that. It was, that a, old. it was a radio program turned comic strip mm -hmm. turned movie. Yeah. By the way, here's something that weird. That movie is awesome, by the way. Yeah. Stick Tracy is awesome. It holds you up. Know, yeah. They've tried to make more. It turns out Warren Beatty still owns the movie rights to make Dick Tracy movies. And he's like, no, Not unless without I'm me. Dick Tracy. And it's really weird. And he's done interviews as Dick Sorry, Tracy. Sorry, you're too old. You're too fucking old, man. They're not gonna do that. The Phantom, yeah, Steel. Uh, I don't. I don't want to see another Phantom. No. Sorry, I don't want to see the Zane. first Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen enough of the Phantom to go. No. It, yeah. No. It's just weird. It's not for me. And you know what sucks? It's a hundred percent accurate. Like the Phantom movie is like, yeah, that's. That's the Phantom. And like, look at him. That's what he looks like. And this is what he does. This is what he does. <laughs> he he punches, I don't know. He punches people. adventurers and, he, he, and bangs people. He's like a weird supernatural Indiana Jones. Yeah, but like not really. He's not really that supernatural. It's just that like he at least has sex one time in his life because he has to have a son. <laughs> no, and but then, like. He also has a ring that has magical powers in it. Like when he punches people that comes out. 
Yeah, I don't even remember if it does anything. I think it's remember just like the a, skulls that turn into things and like I do remember the skulls, that, lasers. Yeah, shoot lasers. I yeah, that's yeah. True. His ring countered that skull. Oh yeah, that's right. So it's bizarre. Still, still pretty crappy, but I, uh, I agree. yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your other pick for for a a comic book sequel you'd like to see today? So, David Harbor's Hellboy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> did you see it yes did you see it with me <laughs> pretty sure i did i also watched it again two weeks ago oh nice i did not think that was very good really yeah okay yeah, i i like david Har i love david harper i watch him in anything especially that upcoming uh santa movie which we gotta watch but um yeah yeah, I love that we saw that. Tra I was like, I showed you guys the trailer. You're like, that's what it is. Oh, now I'm on board. Like you guys <laughs> thought it was. Uh, you and Tiffany both thought it was a like slash a horror movie. movie. Yeah, because like, I've yeah. seen Jack Frost and not like the Happy Jack oh, Frost yeah. with Jack with uh, Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton, but the Jack Frost killer scarecrow. I'm gonna you know stab you with a icicle. Karen, guy. yeah, the the rapist or the or the, or the oh yeah, God, yeah. No, I thought it was just like no, let's turn Santa evil. Wasn't there a Triple H or a uh, yeah, a gold somebody movie? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Maybe? Stone Cold Steve Austin. Maybe that was a horror Santa. I think at some point. Yeah, I I feel like I there mean, was, but that's what I thought this David Harbor movie was. Right. I'm like, oh god, Santa's gonna be evil. Why do we always have to make Santa evil? Can he right. just well, be a force for good? Because he's because he's public domain, and I want to create a franchise out of it. And it's like, no, no, no. Violent Night is it's Die Hard on Christmas with Santa Claus as John McClane. Like, oh. yeah, as your protagonist. Yeah, I was like, that I'm oh. on board for. Oh, okay, yes, yes, yeah. But uh, but yeah, no. So I love David Harbor, and I liked his Hellboy. Like, I I I liked it. He looks really weird. Like he his face is all like smushed in. Like it looks like it's he looks in. more demonic. Yeah, he looks more like uncomfortable, which I'm sure was a note. They were like, no, Ron Perlman looks too much like Ron Perlman as Hellboy, which Ron Perlman looks too handsome, essentially, right. which, you know, got to make Hellboy look a little there, evil. There's a sentence no one's ever said, but uh, yeah, I, I, I still have a real sauce. I'm going to get a letter from Ron Perlman. Thank you for saying that. That yeah. was very nice. Dear Ben, uh, thank you. And dear Sal, fuck you. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, but no, yeah, I uh, I love that first Hellboy movie. And I, I I wanted to like the the reboot because I love David Harbor and I think that I know Mike Mignola really had like a lot more creative control I mean, in that movie. Even even the second Hellboy movie, Golden Army, was good. Yeah, I didn't really like that one either. But uh, <laughs> by then I was like, wise, oh, it looked great. No, exactly. No, no, it, it looks amazing. It's just I'm not interested. I was like, I don't care about this Golden Army. I'm not interested in seeing Hellboy have children. Uh, n none of this is helpful. there are aspects to the movie where yeah i don't care about the kids either right but the elves yeah no awesome the elves are point. cool yeah it, it it really leans into the i mean like obviously when he goes to when he not when he goes to hell but he goes to the underworld and he gets like the fucking yeah you know, the crazy like pan's labyrinth shit it's like yeah no that's awesome um but yeah and that's a cool situation and exploration of like that mythology and where hellboy does the thing I like about David Harbour's Hellboy was that yeah. it was all about like him bringing about the end of the world, much like it was supposed to be in the first Hellboy movie. Yep. But it got dark. It did get really dark. And I really liked, uh, I like Mila Jovovich in that movie. She's great. She's good. Um, I like Ian McShane as Professor Broom, despite the fact that I think John Hurt is better. I, I could give or take him as I like Ian McShane Dr. Broom. generally. Well, yeah, no, he's, he's fun. Yeah. But, he was this very he's asshole dickhead. Dr. Broom. He's a lousy dad. It was horrible. Um, yeah, I, I was, but, but I kind of like, I was like, you're going with a different interpretation. Like it's a, yeah. like Professor Broom in the, in the, in the, in the Del Toro movies is like sweet. Like I love that character. He's great. And then in this one, it's like, no, he's a dickhead. And it's like, okay, all right, cool. And like, he's not as old. He doesn't have like this regret about the things that he's done where Broom in the first Del Toro movies does. Yes. Like, oh no, I've, I've made mistakes and there's things I have to like account for. Yeah. This yeah. guy's just like, nah, we were, we were fighting evil. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Who cares well, if I, you know, took a, a demon for a, a protege. Right, like, how am I supposed to fight evil with not be, like, a monster myself? 
Um, I loved the the hunting uh, sequence was dope. That was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, when they were fighting the trolls. The fighting the trolls is really cool. Um, the thing that really bugged me about that movie was 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 uh, Sasha Lane, the Alice Monaghan okay. character, uh, because her English accent was so horrible. Like immediately, she immediately comes out like talking, and I'm like, "You're not British. Like you're not British, a lot." And then I'm like, and sometimes I'm wrong about these things. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, man. you had to research it. And you're just like, wait, is she right? Like, or or is she just so British that she sounds like she's faking it? Nope, she's American. Why make her British at all then? Right, like especially when she when they're like, oh, uh, 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 Sasha, do you know how to do a British accent? Oh, I should do, Gubna. Okay, she's not British. Cool, we'll just not do that. Um, but instead, they're like, no, that was. It was I remember. I remember. Okay, remember in um. Uh, this is just going back a ways, but Firefly. I remember uh, uh, when Summer Glau in uh, when when River and Badger are going back and forth. Yeah. Yes, and she does her Badger voice, and it's like really not good. It's not great. No, it's not great, right? But if you watch that with the commentary, you're Joss Whedon just 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 splooching all over the place about how good he's like. You don't understand. This scene didn't exist until we found out how good summer glow was at accents and i'm like then you're really not good at hearing accents because that's not very good it was just anyway i'm off track it was, it was just too thick it was it's just not very good like it's just like i don't even i'm like it, i'm just I'm, I'm very aware that you're doing a voice right now summer um but uh but yeah as far as this hellboy movie goes i think when Ian McShane popped out of uh, Sasha Lane's like shoulder or whatever as like mouth. a ghost. Uh, yeah. As out of her mouth as like a ghost uh, uh, tapeworm. Yep. Uh, I, I was like, I don't really think I like this movie. <laughs> See for me, the movie was fun and David Harbour plays a great he does. Hellboy just because just like, oh, he's Hopper. come on. He's Hopper. He's Hopper as Hellboy. He's Hopper as Hellboy. I which I love it. 100% I'm okay with that. But, but and he's so him different and from Baba Rocky. Yaga. Yes, that was great. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm him and the pig guy, I was okay. Uh yeah. I like the pig guy. Don't get me wrong. He was great. I like that, you know, he took something from me. I had a life before he, you know, kicked me out and made me this monster. Yeah. But the ending scene where hell is coming out, yes. I want more of that. I want an apocalyptic Hellboy movie where like, no, the world is never going to be the same because you're here and right. we have to deal with this now. Yeah, that's fair. Or even okay. him in hell. Like those monsters that came out and were just yeah. slaughtering people. Yeah. They're fun. Holy crap. Yeah. That's, that's what I want out of a horror movie. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So like if you would were to do a, uh, a sequel to Hellboy 2019, you'd be like, more just like bigger uh hell on earth like everything they did because literally teased in both hellboy movies they're like they're like how about his horns grow he gets his crown of fire and they offer him the throne of hell and then he doesn't do that and i'm like that's the same the same it's the same plot it's the same fucking plot man yeah uh, also hellboy's arm is like i think i remember it being like orange in this movie for some reason and i'm like why isn't it red I don't know. It, it, it's very much a nitpick. It, it, that movie was very much a nitpick fest for me, so I do apologize. But uh, uh, Ron Perlman's arm looked better. It did look better. It did. This one, this one was too long, in my opinion. Yeah, it was like yeah, a was. prosthetic that they added on, and they had him like manipulating it inside. And yep. because of that, it was out to here. Yeah, and you're seeing it. You're just like, it's it's just too long. It's too long. You're right, and that's exactly that must be how they manipulated it. Yeah, no, that's 100 percent what it is. But. Uh, I do like David Harbour as Hellboy and uh, and with with Ian McShane, like not chewing the scenery anymore. I guess that'd be kind of fun. And like, we got the leopard we got guy. Into Abe Sapien. That's right. That's right. He's at like the very end or he's a post credit scene or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right at the leopard end. guy, take or leave it. But he's you know, he's fine. But uh, he's he's fun. I enjoy him. Yeah. The, the post credit scene scene, I believe, is Bobby Yaga talking to Rasputin. Yeah, I think you're right. But again, like, like I'll Rasputin. finally let you die. Yeah, I get it. But like Rasputin is bringing about the end of the world. Yeah, 
Yeah. How great would that be? That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, it's been a long time and I, I, you know, I don't see a lot of movies nowadays, but like, it's been a long time since I've seen a movie about like the straight up end of the world, like biblical end of the world. And that's something that I would very much like to see on film, especially in like, if they dedicated any amount of budget to it to like, go, yeah, here we go. It's going to be really cool. And it's going to be like insane. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Hellboy 2019. I would like to see a see. Yeah, I, I'd watch it. Look, I'd watch it. Uh, see, I, another ticket sold. Right. Ex- yeah, there we go. One at a time. Uh, okay, so I would. Lo- this isn't really fair because it's not because we kind of got them. <laughs> but this I'd, isn't fair. I, I, I'd, I'd like to see a real sequel to Batman Returns. Okay. Yeah, you want Batman three? Yeah, I want Batman three. But I don't. But I don't know if I want Batman three thirty five years later. So like that's kind of like on my. That's kind of on my like. I kind of just wish we'd gotten more Burton Keaton Batman movies. Um, as far as a movie that would ma- be made today, I think it might be time for another Crow. They made. I, I I'm I'm mixed about this. Right. Oh no, they made more than two. Did they really? Oh yeah, no. <laughs> it's not good. Because two like, was not good. No, City of Angels. I, uh, I I never saw City of Angels, but I did see in every comic book an ad for it. There is a three. Is there really? And I'm fairly certain Edward Furlong plays the crow. Oh no! Or there's a four, and Edward <laughs> Furlong plays the crow. <laughs> You are 100% correct. It is absolutely Edward Furlong in The Crow. Wicked Prayer, number four. That is way too recent. 2005. I see you there with your one yeah. stars. Uh, uh, oof. Ooh. I've seen scenes and I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. That's okay. Maybe yeah, I, I don't even know who is in three. David Boreanaz is in four. Uh <laughs> No. Uh yeah. <laughs> Who's in three? Nobody. But uh oh Kirsten Dunst is in three. Kirsten Dunst, what are you doing in the crow? Right? You know what it is? She's like, it's the year 2000. I loved the crow. She's like, I was in an interview with a vampire. <laughs> I'm of course I'll I'm be down in. for this kind of shit. What was yeah. two? Two two was City of Angels. City of Angels, was, yes. Okay. So it's, it's the crow, it's City of Angels, it's salvation, and then it's resurrect or it's yeah, the Crow Three Salvation, and then the Crow Four Wicked Prayer. Yep. Yeah, so, City of Angels, I think, was the the first like a, a genuine attempt at at being a sequel. And when I saw it, I was like, okay, there are aspects of this I enjoy. It's just yeah. not as good. No, exactly. It's just not as good. Like there is something you. I, I saw the Crow. I think two Halloweens ago. Okay. So like it's it's a little fresh in my mind. Fire it up! Fire it up! Fire it up! It's 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 pretty dope. Like it's such a good okay for it, what it not wants great. to be. Like, yeah, what it's do it's yeah it's like Dark City. Like it's like yeah. you did it. You did. I know what you're going for. I have like, a vision. Yeah, and like the vision is Gotham. Like yeah. it's just this shitty city where no one can really escape it. Crime is rampant. No mm-hmm. one can do anything about it. And if you live there, you're just stuck in this awful dirge day yeah. after day. Exactly. And the only salvation that you have is this one person you love and it's ripped away from you and it hurts so bad. And you love them so much. You come back from the dead to yes. avenge them. That is fucking awesome. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's like if Christopher Hall just like made a movie. <laughs> Uh, no, no, the crow is actually is actually a really good. It's a great comic book. It's a really, I, and I think it's a great. It's a deliberate movie. It feels, I've never read the comic as much as I love the movie. I've yeah, never read it. It's you know, it's very different. I mean, it's different in as much as like, you know, the 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 crow. I remember finding out. I think that the director had only made music videos until the crow, and I was like, that completely changed. Yeah. Out. That tracks. That tracks like you wouldn't believe. Like that tracks like Thunder Mountain Railroad. Like I, <laughs> I get it. Uh, especially watching it again, you know, in my thirties, being like, oh, 
this is just a music. You're just this is just a music video with with no music in it, <laughs> and yet great soundtrack. Oh yeah, no, it's it, I mean the music like yeah, absolutely. Plus you got but it's yeah. it's it's the shot composition, it's the angles that they use, it's yeah. the cuts they do. Yeah, and like the weird like effects they try to uh, uh, accomplish like in camera. Where it's like, okay, here's this thing, and it's like a miniature. We're gonna fucking push the camera through it, and then we're gonna merge it with the other film, and it'll look like you know, it's like it looks like you just did that. But in 1994, I guess that's pretty impressive, you know. But uh, I don't know. It's it's one of those things where I'm like, I I don't know if you can do a sequel to The Crow, and I say that because they in the in the world where they've made three of them, um, but. <laughs> You know, I would say they've Were never they attempted, successfully done it. And everyone's yeah. just like, I can't do as good as Brandon Lee. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. I'm and out. it's like, dude, it, it's not. I mean, Brandon Lee is the best crow on screen. Is the best crow on screen that we've gotten. Mm -hmm. But that's not to say that we couldn't get another great crow movie. I think so. After. My only problem is I'm worried that it's going to be like the Conan reboot. Where it's like, this is, you know what? I get it, and I and I, I'm with you. I think Jason Momoa would be a great Conan. This movie, and it, like, you know what? You're making this movie, and it, like, I you are you are actually doing Conan stuff. Like, I, I get it. It's just that, but it looks, but it, but it just it looks so. It looks like the Mummy. Okay. So it, it's like it's toothless, and it's like it's polished, and is the CG looks like dated. It's just you know. Yeah, no. To and, have and, the crow yeah. today, right, is taking a movie out of time. You'd have to, and say then it recreating the it. Yeah, it has such a '90s aesthetic to it. It is. It is the '90s for a particular demographic personified. Yeah, people who watched MTV. Not like, everybody. I mean, not yeah. everybody who watched MTV, but like the MTV generation, grunge yes. music, rock, goth, you all got. that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, no. It, it, I don't know if there's it, an audience for a crow today. If you watched all the Nine Inch Nails animated or claymation music videos, you watched the Crow movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that? Uh, what was that big band uh, concert that just happened recently with all, all the band, like like One Eighty Two, and everybody like. You know what I, I mean? can't like remember the, the name of it, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that fucking thing. I, I was like, if you went to that concert, you might see our crow sequel. Like, <laughs> I, yeah. I and I, but I wonder if a crow, like, can you make a crow sequel? Because here's the thing with the crow, like, the next crow, you could make a crow sequel 35 years later and set it in 1996 or set it in like the day after the first crow movie because you it can doesn't just, matter who yeah. the crow is. Go back in time. It doesn't have to be set now. Right. But my question is, could you do a Crow movie today? Like, could a Gen Zer be the Crow? <laughs> or is that, has that Crow flown? Is that time over? Because, like, if you made a Crow, a new Crow movie, and, like, let's say you said it in 1995 or 1996. Right. Would anyone go fucking see it except people in their 40s going, like, oh, man. Another crow. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, That's a I really. Think, yeah. I, I, I want to say no. Yeah. I feel like, like no. the idea of the crow, the whole aesthetic of it was like, my life is nothing without this person. Yeah, which I mean, like that's Spawn, that's Ghost Rider, like that's that, that. These are themes and ideas that like people think they could make movies of today right that are very popular for comic book fans but at the right. end of the movie right rather than get back together with them it's they i've died. avenged their death yeah I've yeah yeah killed the people who killed them so yeah. that they don't continue this cycle of violence now right. granted there is the like he goes to heaven afterwards yes but like i don't know yeah yeah it doesn't I'd... have the same kind of satisfaction that you get from movies where like the hero is in love with someone and at the end they risk their life and their soul yeah but they're still with them in this life right, right. like ghost rider yeah yeah but then i mean the other thing is would audiences be down for a movie where it's like so your protagonist uh 
you know, he, he, he loves music and he just plays in a rock band and uh, his girlfriend is viciously raped and murdered in front of him. And then he himself is viciously murdered as well. And uh, the, the premise of the movie is he comes back to life and murders them. It's a revenge porn movie. But uh, like two thirds of the way through the movie, he loses his ability to, 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 uh, to, you know, God mode them. And so to kill the last guy, he has to try really, really hard. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't know if audiences are like, yeah, I want to see that. Like, I mean, that's basically like a Punisher movie where it's like, so the premise of the movie is uh, there's a bunch of guys and they're selling drugs. And then this guy with a t-shirt shows up and murders all of them. And like the, 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 the conflict is um, what if they, what if, what if he doesn't kill all of them? Like, I don't know if people are down for that kind of plot anymore, but again, if you if you try to change that, you're not making a crow movie, and I think that's the I I I I, I don't know. I so, feel like there's a there's a dearth of those things, and I'd like no make more movies about like just kind of yo some folk are bad, you know, especially in the sexist like, universe. I feel like if you made the movie and you didn't make it a crow movie until the end, oh, like it's a no, it's a vigilante. Yeah. And then they're concerned, like, you know, they, they're not the ones getting shot. They're not the ones getting stabbed. You don't see the fact that they have that healing factor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the movie, like, they're on the ropes. Right. And you see them heal, and you see, like, the fact that they're like, no, I'm the fucking crow. Yeah. I, there is no stopping me until my justice is done. Yeah. I feel like that could work. Because That'd if be you cool. don't know the entire time, and you're concerned, you'd be like, oh, the hero might not make it. Yeah, yeah, I could see that yeah. being fun. You know how you get away with that crow show. You do a crow show where every episode is a different crow. Is one of those set on a pirate ship? It must be. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm in. Yeah, I'm. T- I think a crow show would be cool. You know, where you know get, you get girl crow, dude crow, black guy crow. You know, like Hispanic crow. Like you can try all kinds of different crows and. There's all different manner and flavor of revenge. Oh, that's true. You know, like these guys do a miniseries. My... Do a do a ten episode miniseries. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, ten episode miniseries on some unrated kind of network or whatever. You know, like uh, Netflix, HBO, or... Netflix, all of them. HBO, Netflix, it. Amazon, whatever. But like, you know, you get the guys and the boys to make it, and it's just like. You know, some of them and like, yeah, some of them are set in like a like the like a like a barrio. Some of them are in like a like, you know, the third world, you know, like, uh, I don't know, you know, where were those crows? One set in feudal <laughs> Japan because we have to go there. No, that's a <laughs> show. But yeah, I, I think there's I think there's some room for a crow sequel, if only just to be like, we're going to give it one more try. We're going to try one more time. OK. Especially because it's one of those things where you don't have to worry about all the actors being old. True. Yeah, you can just recast. Right? Yeah. Well, you just cast. You don't have to recast anything. There's Nobody's coming back. Unless you want to bring back Ernie Hudson. Because he's also in The Crow. I mean, if he's the if he's the through line where he's Oh my like, god! Oh. <laughs> yeah, that'd be kind of fun. And he's following like the mythology of The Crow be like, no, now I have to go help this other person. Yeah. Then he's yeah. the Sam Neil of the <laughs> of Ghost Rider. Is it Sam Neil? It's Sam uh, Elliott. Sam Elliott. Thank you. Yeah. I knew I had something wrong. Right. It's one of the Sams. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Sam Elliott's the only reason to watch that fucking movie. Um, yes. You got any others that are just off the top of your head? You're like, oh, man, they should make a sequel to this. It'd be kind of cool. Not off the top of my head. And, and no. not not comic book movies per se. No. But if they were going to remake, like, a sci-fi movie, mm-hmm. there was a weird sci-fi movie uh, I want to say it came from Planet Nine or like there's this weird TV movie where like an alien comes in yeah. from a weird TV signal. And I'm I'm going to look it up real quick. Yeah. Was it it came from Planet Glurg? Nope, that's that's a that's a magic. The, car, the gathering card that you can choose. Um. And Plan 9 from Outer Space is entirely different. Fuck. Uh, yeah. No. All right. I don't know what it is. I'll never be able to find it again. <laughs> the The comments will know, and then we'll never be able to do a sequel to it. But, uh, uh, yeah. Off the top of my head, no. My, my, my top was Dread. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that's like, come on. Yeah. Out of all these things, 
Dread is not only the most the one I want the most, it's also the most likely to get one because there's no damn reason not to. Carl Urban's down to do it, and you could still manage to keep the budget down because, you know, 11 years later, I think we've managed. You could still you could shoot that on a, on a budget again. Oh, yeah. It still works. Yeah. The problem is just like people didn't see it. Like it just didn't was the, make the money. I know. And oh my god, seeing that in the theater again yeah, on a big nice. screen. Oh. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Damn it. Um I want another Ghost Rider. <laughs> I mean, you'll get one. It just won't be that one. I don't want that I, one. I don't want a sequel to Ghost Rider. I want a sequel to Ghost Rider 2. Oh my god, Spirit of Vengeance. Because that was so much better. It was better in as much as he looked better and it was more ridiculous because I think it was the, hardcore. I, it was insane. Yeah, I, I wish it were more hardcore, but also like I wish it were in like the American Southwest and not in like Prague Europe. or yeah. whatever. <laughs> I agree. My problem with the first Ghost Rider is the villains are goofy. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, Black I didn't Heart take talks. a serious. I, they're not fun. No, no. They're There's just nothing fun about dumb them. looking. Yeah. So and it's like him no versus yeah. the mob. Yeah. Yes, I'm fine with that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And then it yeah. turns to spiritual and evil. Yeah. No, I'm. De- I mean, like, I liked most of Spirits of Vengeance. I just was like, like this is. You know, there's a kid, and I don't. I really don't like that actor from Game of Thrones who plays the devil in that one. I'm like, oh my god, I don't even remember who it was. It's he's he's in a lot of stuff. He was in Road to Perdition, and uh, I think Game of Thrones as well. And he's just he plays he plays the voice of Steppenwolf in the uh, in the Justice League movies. Okay, it's just like God damn that guy. But uh, yeah, uh, I. I guess if I had to throw out a couple, you know, I'd like to see a sequel, a sequel, not like a reboot of that TMNT CG movie. Yeah, that was good. I really like that movie, which is technically, I guess, like a sequel. It's like a it's like a requel to Ninja Turtles one and two. I don't know if they if they made that canon. Um, I would like to see a sequel to Sky High. There, I said it. I like Sky High. <laughs> I expected like someone to come out of the woodwork, like Tiffany to open up the back door and be like, Sky no! High! Boo! <laughs> I think I she likes the movie too. Yeah, I no, know she gotta... does, but that ha- it needs that kind of effect. Yeah. Someone yeah, you heard what I said. You. Sky High. Uh, yeah, I like that movie a lot. And uh, and of course, Superman Returns. I, 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 I want more of that in a cinematic universe without the kid in it. Okay. I like the aesthetic. I liked Fred and Ralph as Superman. It, you know, I, it's it, unfortunately the lead and the director are uh, people we can't work with anymore. So like the lead, yeah, the lead villain and the director yeah. are both like huge problems. So it's like, so what, what, how are we going to ma- maintain that? Like, how are we going to preserve any of the, like the quality from that movie? It's like, I don't know if we can, I think it's, it's just, not possible. And it's too far. It's too. It's too far gone. Uh, I think Superman Returns came out in what, like, I don't know, like two thousand eight or something like that. <laughs> Would you want to see? And this is entirely Six. off the topic of superhero movies. Oh sure. A third Gremlins movie. You know, um, there's a there there's there's they're threatening to make a uh, a cartoon movie or a cartoon series oh. called Mugwai. The beginning or you know, it's like the or it's like set like in the past, like the ancient past. But the origin of Mugwise. Um, that is not the direction to take this. That I I uh, I remember. I think both John Glover and Red Letter Media pitched for me the perfect Gremlin three. Gremlins three. And Go, it is that I hear it. Da- Daniel Clamp becomes president of the United States, and Billy Peltzer becomes a like age an aide to the president, and it's Gremlins in the White House. And it's just like yes. Yes. A thousand times yes. Get Rick Baker <laughs> and just do it again in the fucking White House. I they love got... Daniel Clamp as the president. Oh my I know. God. Right. Daniel Clamp's the president. William Peltzer works there. Maybe uh, Phoebe Cates comes back too. I don't care. And uh, and it's Gremlins in the White House and Gremlins are calling heads of state and they're like setting up nuclear launch codes 
and you know they're in the rose garden <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> uh, like, but yeah gremlins in the white house yeah i mean if it's yeah yeah as long as it's the same team like as long as it's uh you know rick baker doing the effects and uh joe dante doing the direction i kind of okay i like daniel clamp he's hilarious and yeah gremlins 2 is a fun and funny horror movie yeah i want to see it a little bit more like gremlins 1 i want mm, it to be a little, a little scarier yeah because gremlins 2 is a fucking comedy yeah like, <laughs> gremlins hands 2. down there, I mean, there's there's some there's some intense sequences but it's not a horror movie uh, yeah the I, scariest I, thing in that movie is the spider scene spider scene the hallway. Is, that's it yeah yeah I, I would say you know what was scary to me was the scene of the bat gremlin attacking mr futterman in the street it really bugged me uh because like, everyone it, else reacted like nothing was happening yes yeah no one reacted and then there's that shot where he like cuts his head open and i'm like this is really scary <laughs> like this man's gonna die and no one cares sal this is new york no one gives a shit i know that's scary <laughs> apathy is scary I'll, I'll tell you this the same ex I had the exact same reaction when lewis tully is chased by the terror dog yeah and they go to, and they go to tavern on the green and no one gives a shit that scared the shit out of me because no one helped him. New York. That's new. And both. You're on York. your own. <laughs> You're on your own. Yeah, that's true. That's why I like rarely ever walk anywhere in New York. I'm like, every time it's nighttime and I'm like, hey, we could take, we could take an Uber. That's fine. I'll pay. I don't care. We'll, 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 we'll. Hey, is any, hey, like after New York comic, hey, does anybody want to get the fuck out of here right now? Hey, my legs are kind of tired. Let's uh, not walk. Yeah. Hey, let's get in the car. And hey, do we even need to be in the city? It wouldn't wouldn't this be way more fun if it was in my house? Can we just watch New York Comic Con across the river with big binoculars? <laughs> right? It's just because it's so scary and nobody cares about you. And they'll let you get eaten by terror dogs or whatever the hell they did to him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, so there you go. Let us know in the comments uh, what superhero, no, what comic book movie you'd like to see a sequel today. Uh, or if you just agreed with Ben or me, you know, just say that too. Say that too. Yeah. And if you didn't agree with us, uh, don't comment at all. <laughs> <laughs> but do like the video and subscribe to the channel because that'll help us out a lot. Uh, and it'll definitely get your voice heard. But uh, otherwise, Ben, thank you so much for being on the show today. My pleasure. And, uh, thank you for having me. Oh, always uh, pleasure's all on this side of the uh, screen. And uh, we'll see you guys next time with more here on Comp Up Returns. So long, everybody.